Hey everyone, JJ here. Uh, in this lesson, I'm going to be talking to you guys about medical terminology. Medical terminology is like learning like a different language. It's it, it pretty much is like a different language, but there are many easy ways to break the word apart into different pieces to make it much easier to uh, to comprehend. The first thing I want to talk to you guys about is just breaking it down. So uh, in in a, a medical term, each each word has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, and the beginning is known as the prefix, and this is typically a, a descriptive uh, part of the word or description that uh, just tells tells you what the number or the amount is, uh, the size, location, color, etc. The middle of the word is known as the root, and that's kind of like the subject of the word. It, it's and it usually relates to a part of the body. And the ending of the word is called the suffix, or what I like to call the condition of the word, which kind of details the process or procedure, but can also uh, tell you about the amount, the amount and location, um, or uh, other things as well. So just to kind of give you guys a brief background about uh, certain prefixes that are commonly used, um, one of the first ones you probably hear of is macro. Um, macro is just means large, and uh, it typically is used in the context that it is visible to the naked eye. So you might have heard of macroscopic, macro economy. And the opposite of that is micro, which just means small uh, or not visible to the naked eye. And the way I like to remember this is that um, think of a microscope. So things, some things in the world are ma microscopic and other things in the world like our our galaxies and, and uh, in our observable universe, that's a macro, that's macroscopic. So some other things um, about, about amount and size would be hyper. Hyper um, just means high, uh, above normal, or elevated. And another one, the opposite of hyper would be hypo. So uh, that means just low, below, normal, or decreased. So a couple other prefixes that you may not be aware of. Um, one is u or normo, and that just means that it's a normal. So or, or the condition is normal. So it could be you could be euthermic instead of hypothermic. You're euthermic, so you're at a normal body temperature. Another term is pan or omni, and that just means all. So um, you can kind of think of omnipotent, um, all powerful, um, panorama. It's an, an, a term that kind of encompasses all of of something. Another prefix would be a or n, which just means absent or lacking. And the, and the prefix maglo also means large or larger than average. So to get into some uh, numerical prefixes, um, this one's pretty easy. Mono just means single or singular. Di means two or double. Tri, three or triple. Quad for four or quadruple. Poly is many or a lot. And oligo is kind of just a blanket term that just set, means that there are just a few, several, or very little. So for the prefixes related to speed, we have tacky, which means rapid or fast, and brady or breaky, um, which means slow. And, and so for these terms, you kind of typically think of the heart. Um, you can have uh, tachycardia or bradycardia or brachycardia. Uh, so they're just different terms to um, describe the speed of, of the heart rate. So for uh, different locations uh, for prefixes, um, we've got epi, peri, and circum, um, and these all just mean around, um, around the location or around the object. So you can just think of perimeter, um, circum, uh, circumference, uh, the epicenter. You're kind of around the center. So like different things like that. Now the other one is endo or intra, they mean pretty much the same thing, that just means inside, inner or interior. So, and so for these ones you can think of intracellular or the uh, endosome, for example. Uh, the, the, the opposite of those ones are exo and extra. So they, these just mean outside or outer or exterior, so you can think of exocytosis or the extracellular uh, environment. And a term that a lot of students uh, get confused with is inter. Uh, so you can see that intra and inter are very similar. Uh, so 
the, the, the difference is that inter means between. So for example, like the intracellular um, environment versus the intercellular environment, uh, they're, they're different meanings. So just be aware of that, guys. The next thing um, uh, is trans. Now, um, there's you can think of transmembrane or transatlantic. Um, it just means across. The other one is dia or per. Uh, so that just means through or complete. So uh, dia, you can think of dia, diameter or uh, per, you can think of perforate. It's something that goes through. Um, it just means going through something. Um, the other one is medi or medio or media, uh, which just means in the middle. So the next one is para, which means nearby. And then we also have juxta, which means next to or beside or adjacent. So uh, just think of juxtaposition, you put things beside each other. So the next prefixes involve movements. Um, the first one is ab, ab, which means uh, away. So you're uh, when you abduct, abduct your arms, you're moving, uh, you're, you're, uh, moving your arms away from your body. Um, or abduction or abducting a child. Um, that's an easy way to remember AB um, for away. The next one is AD or ad, um, that which means towards. So adducting your arms means bringing your arms to in, in towards your body. That's adduction. The next one is uh, dis, and that means to separate. So um, just think of displace. Uh, you're kind of separating something out or separating things. The next uh, group of prefixes um, I want to uh, talk to you guys about is colors. So, um, so color, the prefix um, for color is actually chromo or chromato. Leuco, that means white. Um, next one is erythro, means red. Cyano is blue. Chloro, green. Melan or melano is black, so melanoma. And the last one is uh, one that you very rarely ever hear, which is flav, it means yellow. Um, so you guys may have heard of these before, leuco for white, leukocyte, um, red, red blood cells or erythrocytes, cyano, Maybe cyanide is, is uh, a word that you think of. You become hypoxic and kind of become blue, right? Cyanosis. And another one is chloro, chlorophyll in plants. It makes them uh, look green. So those are just some easy ways to remember those. Now getting into the body itself, um, just some general terms. Uh, one is homeo, um, which just means uh, body. Uh, cephalo is head. Serve or cervi like cervical uh, or cervical is neck. Thoraco or thorax uh, is the chest. Abdomino uh, is the abdo abdomen or abdominal. Uh, pelvo or pelve is uh, just pelvic, is just related to your pelvis. The peritone. Um, is just related to the peritoneum, so the lining within your abdomen. Derm, um, which means skin, or more specifically, dermis. And neuro, uh, for nerve. And hemo, for blood. Uh, arterio, or angio, for arteries. So for arterio and angio, you might have heard of uh, angioplasty or angiograms, they, uh, they all have to do with arteries. The next one is vena or vena, uh, which is just the venous system or veins. Uh, you may have heard of the uh, inferior or superior vena cava, vena. Uh, so that's a, a way to remember that. Vasculo just means vascular. So your vascular system, your vasculature. Musculo for muscle. Myo and uh, also the related term sarco for muscle. So you're, um, you might have heard of uh, 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 myocardium or sarcoplasmic reticulum. They all deal with muscle or muscle cells. Um, two related ones are also skeletal or skeletal, um, like in musculoskeletal system, 
uh, and osteo, which means bone. So they both are related to bones. Another one is cyto for cell, and the other related term um, the, it's, uh, is the suffix cyte, which means uh, uh, cells or cellular. So the next organs I'm going to get into are the neck and thoracic uh, organs. So starting with your thyroid, um, which this thyro is the prefix for that one. Uh, tracheo for trachea. Esophageal or esopho, uh, esophago um, for esophagus. Thymo for thymus, which is just the, the, uh, the uh, immune system organ that's uh, relatively close to your heart. Masto or mammo, which uh, is related to the mammary gland or the breast. Pomo or pneumo for the lung and cardio for the heart. The next organs I'm going to get into is the abdominal organs. So gastro for the stomach, hepato for the liver. So you may have heard of hepatitis or hepatocyte. So they all relate to the liver. Uh, one that you may not have heard of is cholecysto. Um, and that's for the gallbladder, so you might not have heard of, but it, uh, maybe cholecystectomy uh, when you remove your uh, gallbladder, or, or cholecystokinin, which uh, controls gallbladder contraction. Another one is spleno, um, that's just for the spleen. Another one is pancreato, um, for the pancreas. Another one is adrenal, for the adrenal gland. The, the just the gland that sits on top of your kidneys and you might not have heard of this one nephro for your kidney so you might uh, you can think of nephrologist um, these are related to the kidney and this actually this word actually comes from um, and is derived from the nephron or the functional unit within the kidney uh, entro is used for the intestines so you might have heard of Enteritis, say. You, may, you might have heard of enteritis, uh, uh, an inflammation of your intestines. And another one is colo, um, which is just for um, col or colo, which is for the colon or large intestine. So you might have heard of colitis, so that's an inflammation of the colon. So here are some common suffixes in medical terminology. Uh, ology is just the study of, um, like biology, the study of life. Uh, nephrology, the study of the kidney. Um, gastroenterology, the study of the gastrointestinal system. Um, and the list can go on and on. It just means the study of um, a particular subject. The next one is philia, um, which means the love of. Uh, and the opposite of philia is phobia, which is just the fear of. So that's an easy one. Most people know that uh, phobia is, is a fear of something. Um, another one that people don't think of is tension. Uh, tension is means just pressure. So um, hypertension, um, high blood pressure. Um, it, uh, tension just means pressure. And um, the... Sia, it's kind of hard to say this, uh, but uh, like hypoxia, uh, oxia or zia is uh, oxygen. It has to do with oxygen. Hypoxia is low oxygen. Another gas that we want to um, be aware of is carbon dioxide, and that is um, capnia. The, the suffix for that is capnia, so you can think of hypercapnia, high carbon dioxide levels. So the next one is uh, ipnia. This is another hard one to say. Um, that just means air. So... Um, it's related to pneumo. Uh, it's spelled this kind of the same way, P-N. You have that P-N there, so it's that odd odd spelling. Um, so it's actually uh, ipnea, so you might have heard of dyspnea or uh, hyperpnea. Different things like that have to do with air or breathing. And another one is very common is A's at the end of a, uh, of a word, and that usually means enzyme. Anyways, guys, that was Medical Terminology Lesson 1. In the next lesson, I'm going to be talking to you guys about uh, different suffixes that describe different disease states and processes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take everything that we've learned and we're going to work through some practice problems in the next lesson. So um, anyways, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. That would be greatly appreciated. 
And uh, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.